Hello po sa lahat. Ito po ang Group 1 and this is our vlog about building materials. Tara, samahan nyo kami. Our topic for today is about concrete. And as you can see, may hollow blocks kasi nga. About concrete na yung topic namin ngayon. And today we'll be discussing about the kinds of concrete. I mean the kinds of cement. So what are the kinds of cement guys? So first, number one is the lime. So lime is one of the oldest manufactured building material used and it is mostly used during the early civilizations like the Egyptian architecture, Greek architecture, Roman architecture. So lime is manufactured by the calcination of limestone. So as you can see here, this is the life of a limestone. So when the carbonates decomposes carbon dioxide which is expelled and the only remaining here is the calcium oxide that means to say na yung limestone is nagiging quick quick lime na siya pag ito ay nilalagyan ng tubig na which we call the process of uh, hydration or slaking magiging ano na siya magiging slated or hydrated lime so when the hydrated lime or the slaked lime is now mixed together with water to create a lime putty the, boot, the putty is now used as a hard finish coatings. Hydrated lime can also be used for mixing with cement mortars or concrete to increase its workability, increase its permeability to water, and reduce cracking due to shrinkage. Hydraulic lime is another kind na naman yan. And then it is used only when slow underwater setting is required. So, number two, gypsum. Okay, so gypsum. Gypsum is known as a miracle mineral because of its fireproof qualities. Like lime, it was also used as a plaster during the early civilizations like the pre-Egyptian architecture, the Greek architecture, and the Roman architecture. However, in architectural terms, the word plaster is most commonly parang the same lang siya na ginagamit as a sa gypsum. So kapag sinabi nila na, oy, kunin mo yung gypsum dun. So that means to say na in architectural terms, oy, kunin mo yung plaster dun. So number three is cement. Cement is most likely ginagamit na din to noon sa mga Roman civilization. Yung cement nila is gawa siya na pinaghalong slate lime and Pozzolana. If you know what Pozzolana is, Pozzolana is a volcanic ash that is hardened under water. So types of Portland cement. If you know what Portland cement is, it is a cement that is universally used. So I don't know if this brick, brick, hollow blocks na nasa likod ko. I don't know if this is Portland cement, but maybe it's yes. Yeah. Oh, Portland cement. Okay, Portland cement na. Ito nga Portland cement, it is originated during the 19th century sa England. Nakalimutan ko yung pangalan, basta friend ko yun. So there are four types of Portland cement. First is the slow setting cement. Next is the quick or fast setting cement, which is high early strength cement. Third is the sulfate resisting cement. Pagamitin mo lang po where alkaline water and soils occur. And the last one is the white cement or the stainless cement which is very free of iron impurities. Okay, so there we have it guys. So I guess that's all that we can discuss you now about the concrete, about the kinds of cement. Uh, one more thing that we would like to add here is that on how to uh, protect, how to store cement correctly. So for example, if kakabili mo lang ng cemento, uh, and you're wondering, paano ba to isustore? Paano ba to ipoprotect, no? So, one more thing na, I mean, one thing that we need to consider here is that kailangan na naka-shelter siya, no? Hindi yung uh, kakabili mo lang ng semento, uh, tas isustore mo lang dyan sa labas at masyadong mainit, ayan. And then, may possibility na mag-ulan. No, uh, mawawalang bisa yung mga ingredients na naihalo sa semento nung sa pagawan nung pagawan ng semento 
kasi may mga ibang minerals na nakapasok mo na okay so our next discussion will be the different kinds of formworks no our forms of concrete in this vlog we will be just discussing at least four kinds four kinds of formworks so the first one that we will discuss right now is the lumber formwork and the example here is this as you can see kini nga poste dili ni siya maforma without a formwork ang function sa formwork is to at least shape and to hold green concrete and without without lumber form dili kita makahimo og shape dili ta dili ta maka kuluma uh, og ingon ani nga poste so the very first thing ni mubuhaton ana is uh, magbuhat sa gitaw ka ng board you can use board or at least a uh, wood a uh, flat or wood no? and then to be ha <coughs> imodig buhusan og uh, semento then like after pila ka daw kung yung semento is natuyo na sa loob uh, that means to say na okay na na tanggalin yung formwork and another thing na naman na uh, formwork that yung discuss na yun is uh, the plywood formwork so ang plywood formwork is also uh, applicable in terms sa uh, mga isa may sa, sa ceilings or kumbaga kung uh, gusto ka mag second floor uh, usually manggoy makmukita na ako ba sa construction site na they are using plywood formworks but if you're using plywood formworks make sure that your plywood is thick enough to hold concrete kasi kapag hindi hindi strong yung concrete mo hindi thick yung concrete mo may malaking chance na hindi magsusurvive yung uh, nag-hold, hindi magsusurvive yung, uh, yung plywood. So, I guess uh, that's all that I can discuss. Then, I will leave it to the next reporter. So, hello, hello everyone. And, my name is Tagmayu Kamu in the place ng Tanan. I am the one that I am the one find proportion mixture of cement, brigade, and water, plastic mass, which can be cast, molded, or formed into predetermined size or shape. Upon hydration, becomes stone-like strength, hardness, and durability. When this process occurs, it's called setting. A concrete is the mixture of cement, aggregate, and water, monosilatoro. And when these are mixed together, it creates plastic mass which can be cast, molded, or formed. Upon kung mahitabo ng hydration, it becomes stone-like strength, hardness, and durability. So when this happens, it is called setting. Uh, setting is the process of hardening of concrete. There are many ways to use concrete. You mix the water and fine aggregate or less than 6 millimeters and 1 fourth inch. It is known as the mortar, stoco, or cement plaster. That is the smooth type of concrete. And when mixed with water, fine aggregate and a large aggregate of more than 6 millimeters and 1 fourth inch sizes produces concrete and rough rough yeah, rough so another one is reinforced concrete this one is when strengthened by embedded steel and the plain mass or, or mass concrete is without the reinforcement so it is called plain or yeah plain or mass concrete so so itong dua kung may nguntag, stoko, or mortar, or plaster, cement or cement plaster, I mean mas less sya sa 6 millimeters sayang size sa aggregate so mostly use fine aggregate the second type uses both fine and large but 
more than 6 millimeters, 1.4 inch sizes. So, mo na siya complete. Also, na siya rough concrete. There are qualities of good concrete. The concrete must should be strong, durable, uniform. I mean, uniform quality and thoroughly sound. Kung di masabtan, thoroughly sound. Thoroughly sound is the compact of the concrete. Good na siya, literal na sound. And these are obtained through careful selection of materials, correct proportioning, thorough mixing, careful transporting and placing, and proper curing of concrete after it placed. So, ito siya, qualities of concrete. Sa ba kayong iro? And, there are three types of materials of concrete. And, most of them are cement, aggregate, and water. So, those are the basics. And, as mentioned earlier, cement, Cement is mostly mixed uh, in the ancient time with volcanic ash, sort of stuff. And <laughs> so, cement in reinforced concrete construction should be high grade, type 1 for plant cement type. So, C150 is on the standard of the American Society of Testing Materials, known as ASTM. And when they test, should be soundness or constancy of volume, motong ikon na compact, and time of setting, and sa yung hardness of the time, fineness, and tensile strength. So when you say tensile strength, tension, di ba? Tensile. For example, para sa water, surface tension sa water, di ba? Mo na makakrate ang buoyancy. So, mo sa gigamit sa pag-test sa cement. Kaya ang stress. So, each bag of cement is equivalent to approximately 1 cubic feet and weighs 24 pounds of cement aggregates. So, aggregates are inert materials fillers used with cement and water in making concrete should be particles and durable, durably strong. There are three types of aggregates. First one is the smaller one which is smaller than 6mm and 1 per inch. It consists of sand, stone screening, or inert materials of similar characteristics. The second one is the coarse aggregate. This one or the larger one, larger than 6 millimeters and 11 inches in size. So this must be um, crushed stones, gravel, or another similar characteristics. So one purpose uh, coarse aggregate is mostly used here as a highly reinforced concrete in any structure of the building. So, muna si course yung gamit. And the third one is the special one. So, no, special. So, special aggregates are cinders, plus, plus forney slag, expanded shale or clay, perlite, vermicolite, these are all um, lightweight and nailable concrete. Pero, these special aggregates are mostly found or used in a firewall because special aggregates, they are the basic insulators of the concrete. The last one is water. So, the, so water should be free from oil, acid, alkali, vegetable matter, or other deleterious substances should be reasonably clear and clean and mostly <laughs> ang water ginagamit to combine with the cement 
to mix with cement to form paste which coats the surrounding inner particles of aggregates. And upon hardening, the purpose of water binds the entire mass together with the paste or aggregate. Thus, the strength of the mixture therefore depends directly upon the strength of the paste. If there are the excess water of the paste become thin and weak. Masubraan ay mag-mix sa water. Mag-weak siya. And hindi siya mag-mix well sa mag So water, it should, it should not be used as seawater or brackish water. Uh, kay nga naman, bawal siya ag seawater. Kay uh, as humans, kung kung kita, huwag na mag-seawater. Di ba dali kata mati-hydrate? So, parestad sa cement. Dali kapag sa, sila ma-hydrate sa water. And, weak siya. Dali ka siya ma-weak. So, naaday gingon dari. Um, the less water used in mixing, the better the quality of concrete. Pero, the less, the lesser, may too dry or when too much water is too weak for concrete. So, it be tama lang, tinta timpla lang pag gamit sa water. Hi guys, I am Harry Dimaporo and today I will be tackling about slump test. So, what is slump test? So, slump test is a measurement of concrete workability or fluidity. So, it is an indirect measurement of concrete consistency and it is used as a method to determine the consistency of the concrete. The consistency are, or the stiffness of the concrete indicates, the, indicates how much water was put in the mix or put or used in the, to the mix. So, the consistency of the concrete mix should be matched from the requirements, the given requirements, which is give it later. So, for a quality product, yeah. So, it gives an idea about the workability conditions of concrete mix. So, let's talk about the three apparatus used to perform slump test. So, first is slump, slump cone. So, its height is 12 inches, 12 inches, then it's up the... It's a very top opening. It has four inches in diameter. Then, sa pinaka below, below is it has eight inches in diameter. Then, second is scale for measurements. Then, third is stamping road for stamping. Yeah. So, so procedure. How to do the slumping test? So first is the base. The base. The base is placed on a smooth surface. Then it is filled with concrete, which has three levels. So first level is, as, as seen in this picture, three levels. So step one is, the ibutang ang concrete sa solid. Then it, we will tap, tap it twelve at uh, twenty five times. Like yeah, twenty five times. Then second concrete tap na sa twenty five times. Then third concrete, like third and last, you'll thump it 25 times. So next is using, so sa pinakataas, kay na ay mga excess na concrete. So you will use the thumping rod to, to, level, to level the concrete. So, so reminder, the mold should be firmly held para daily with error in measuring the slump. So next is step five. After filling is complete, the the slump cone is held vertically upward, upward, and un and unsupported concrete is will now slump. Then, so the difference between the so the difference between the slump cone like slump cone then the concrete is called the slump. Yes, guys. So there are three types of slump. First is collapse. Second is shear, the third is true slump. So the collapse slump means the concrete is completely collapsed. The collapse, guys. 
it means it is too wet or too much water was put in the mix or added into the mix and it has a high workability mix yeah so sheer slump sheer slump is the top portion of the slump is sheer sauce slide mag slide siya sideways like thinner for waterfall or landslide ganun gamay lang gamay lang so true slump is the concrete simply subsides subsides keeping it more or less to shape ganun lang guys so the permissible slump for various types of concrete in relation to their uses is as stated in the table so first is reinforcement condition of wall and footings is at five in five consistency in maximum and two consistency in minimum next is plain footing high stones and substructure walls is at four inches in maximum of consistency and one at minimum next is slab beams thin reinforced walls and building columns is at six inches in maximum and three inches in minimum next is pavements and floor laid in the ground it's three in maximum and one in minimum next is heavy mass construction is at three in maximum and one in minimum so principles of proper proportioning so first is we need to consider a good quality material such as portland water and the use of aggregates next is determine the strength of the concrete using the water cement ratio next is determine the consistency of the mix by using the slump test and it should be as dry as practicable next is add correct proportion of aggregates to the cement and water as will give a mix a of desired consistency next is make a mix that is workable not harsh so the strength of a workable concrete mix the mix depends on the water cement ratio next is the economy of the mix depends upon the proper proportioning of the fine and coarse aggregate so there are several methods of proportioning concrete concrete so first is proportioning by average arbitrary proportions next is the proportioning by water ratio or slump test and slump test next is proportioning by water ratio slump test and finest modules arbitrary proportions so the arbitrary selection of the proportion is the oldest and the most convenient method of the proportioning method so there are five classes of concrete proportioning in arbitrary selection which is class aa class aa should have a proportion of one cement one part of cement 1.5 1.5 part of sand um, 3 parts of gravel and it is used for concrete underwater so class A is should have a proportion of 1 cement 1 part of cement 2 parts of sand 4 parts of gravel and it is used for sus suspended slabs beams, oh. columns like that so um, class B is it should have a proportion of one one part of cement, 2.5 parts of sand, five parts of gravel. It is used for wall for walls for walls thicker than 100 meters and footings and steps. Class D is what it should have a proportion of one part of cement, three three parts of sand. Six parts of gravel. It is used for for concrete plant boxes. Num the um, class B is should have should have a proportion of one part of cement, three part of sand, and three point five part of sand, and seven gravel. 
it is used for mass concrete works. Method of proportioning by water ratio or slump test. So these are the two steps to be observed. So first one is select the amount of water to be added to the cement to get the desired strength. Next, second step, second step to be observed is add enough mix aggregate to the water and cement to give to get a desired your to get your desired consistency. So the proportioning by water ratio, slump test, and fineness modules. So it is the same as the second second method except that the pro proportions of the fine and coarse aggregate are determined are determined by the fine fineness modules method. Hello everyone, I am Jana Felix B. Pinkian and I am going to talk about the mixing of concrete. Well, the mixing of concrete is basically the complete blending of the materials required in order to produce a homogeneous concrete. And it can vary from 1, the machine mixing which is very common, and 2, the hand mixing. Now let us talk about the machine mixing. In machine mixing, the good standard is mixing time. Well, whenever practicable, um, the length of the mixing time should be increased to 1.5 to 2 minutes. And before ka mag-recharge sa imuhang mixer, kailangan din niya ang tanan materials that go sa imuhang mixer na discharge na. Dapat i-frequent yun ni mo ang pag-clean sa imuhang mixer. In machine mixing, there are two general classes, which is the batch mixers and the continuous mixers. Daghan kaayog klase ang concrete mixer and examples of it are the drum, the trough, the gravity, and the pneumatic mixers. Ang pinaka-common nga mixer among all of them is the drum mixer. Now let us proceed to the hand mixing which is very, very satisfying to watch. Ang una ni mo i-mix is ang cement of ang fine aggregate in mix niyo siya dry. And then, water and coarse aggregate shall then be added until ang consistency na required is ma-obtain. Now let us proceed to the transporting and placing of concrete. Fresh concrete should be delivered from the mixer to the forms uninterrupted. Kay na tendency nga ang consistency sa imong fresh concrete maapektuhan na siya as time passes by. And there are tools nga magamit nato for the transporting of your fresh concrete, which is the barrows, the buggies, the buckets, cable ways, hoists, chutes, belts, and pipes. Now let us proceed to the shrinkage of concrete. This is basically the change of volume in the concrete due to the loss of moisture at different stages due to different reasons. First is the plastic shrinkage. Well, this is due to the absorption from the concrete by the aggregate causing cracks in the surface. Next is the drying shrinkage. This is due to the deformation of the paste. Number three is the carbonation shrinkage. This happens when the carbonation process will result in the decomposition of some of the cement compounds. And that will be all for my report. Thank you. Concrete must be allowed to cure. Curing of concrete is a slow process. It can dry or harden due to time, temperature, and manipulation of moisture. The curing timeline is one to three days after setting would be the partial cooling, seven days after that would be semi-cured, and 28 days after that, the cement would be fully cured. The strength of the cement relies on time, so as long as the cement is given time to cure, or as long as it takes, it will be stronger and stronger. The increase of strength is rapid in the early stages and develops slowly but steadily as time goes on. Their ability and compressive strength reach about 60% at its 28th day of curing and about 80% at its third month. Curing of concrete deep relies on dry time. Curing consists primarily in keeping the concrete from drying out too rapidly. This may be done by covering of concrete, removal of forms, sprinkling of water, and using of curing compounds. Different structures require different time to cure. Here are the examples. Footings, massive footings today, 
Christian to live with Putin five days, slab Putin's five days. Walls and pastures, massive walls, 30 centimeters or above, up to two meters high, a day, and add a day for every additional meter or fraction thereof. Thin walls, 30 centimeters or less, up to two meters high, two days, and add one and a half day for every additional meter or fraction thereof. Ventilator walls, buttresses, counterforts, diaphragms. Without loads, stainless, thin walls. Columns reach of height to the least diameter up to 4, 2 days, reach of height to the least diameter from 4 to 15, add to the above number 1 day for every additional meter or height or fraction thereof, but not more than 28 days. Slabs, 3 to 7 feet span, and 3 feet span 5 days, add half day for every additional 1 feet span or fraction thereof. Over 7 feet span, 7 feet span 7 days, add a day for every additional one feet span or fraction thereof, but not more than 28 days. Beams and girders, sides, three days, bottoms, up to 14 feet, 14 days, add one day for every one feet additional span or fraction thereof, but not more than 28 days. Slabs, spandrel walls, seven days, spandrel arcs, 14 days, main arcs, 21 days. Illustrates and copings, etc. Steel inside forms, a day. RC piles and RC posts, size 3 days, bottom 40 days. Hello everyone, um, my name is Christian Duke F. Amora and I've been given a task to discuss about admixtures in concrete and forms. And what is admixtures? Um, admixtures are artificial or natural materials added to concrete in addition to cement, water, and aggregates to improve certain properties of the concrete during casting, laying, or the service stage. Um, basically, um, admixtures are in ingredients like water, water aggregates, cementitious materials, and fiber reinforcements are being added to the concrete before or during mixing. mixing because they give a certain beneficial effects to the concrete like frost resistance, hardening, and it also improves workability and it increases strength and etc. And in order to improve the properties of a concrete, um, the duaka types of admixtures of concrete. Um, the first one is mineral uh, admixtures and the second one is chemical admixtures the first one is mineral mineral admixtures fly ash is gener generally located at power plants or place in landfill landfills um fly ash um it improves the strength and seg segregation of the concrete and makes it easier to pump and the second one is silica fume is a byproduct of the is a byproduct of the ferrosilicon industry and is a highly pozzolanic material that is used to enhance mechanical and durability of the properties of a concrete. Third one is ground graduated blast furnace slug. This is obtained by squinching molten iron slug from a blast furnace in a water or steam to produce a glassy granular product that is then dried and ground into a fine power. This, this is a highly symmetrious and high in calcium silicate hydrates which is, which is a strength enhancing compound which improves the strength, durability and appearance of the concrete. And it and British Amaya gamut for waterproofing. It is also a it is also used for used as the admixtures to make concrete resistance against chemical penetration. The, the last one for the chemical ad admixtures is rice has, rice has ash. As a pozzolanic reactive material that can be used to improve surface area of transition zone between the microscopic um, structure of cement base and aggregate in the high performance concrete. Um, this results drastically benefits durability and resistance of a concrete constructions and their service life. And the, and the 
second type of, of admixtures is chemical admixtures. First one admixtures is accelerating admixtures. Um, they speed up the process of the initial phase of concrete hardening, so they are also called as accelerators. Basically, um, they shorten the time and increase the rate of early strength development. And the second one is retarding admixtures. Um, they are also called as retarders and used especially in high temperature areas where concrete hardens quickly. So, um, retarders um, causes a decrease of rate of hydration of the hydraulic cement and lightens the time of setting. And the third one is water re reducing admixtures. Um, defines that they are used to minimize the demand for water in the concrete mix. Uh, they are also known as pl plasticizers. Um, what, what water reducing admixtures is improved by adding water however adding too much water will increase the workability of a concrete resulting from concrete cancer and segregation and the fourth one is air and training admixtures its main function is to increase the durability and concrete under freezing and thawing conditions um, air and training agents like millions of non coalescing while listing air bubbles in the process of mixing concrete to reduce the segregation of con concrete mixture. Um, it also improves the workability and also enhances anti-freeze ability and durability of the concrete. And the last one is super pl plasticizing admixtures. Are known as high range water reducers are additives used in making high concrete. So like any one I shall myself one the plastic plasticizers um, is known as a high range water reducers or additives used in making high strength concrete and pl plasticizers are are chemically compounds that enable the pro production of concrete with approximately 15% less water content and finally we have the forms of cement the first one is steel forms steel forms may be in the form of pans for concrete choice construction or steel decking or corrugated steel for concrete slabs and slab and choice constructions um, steel forms is strong against forces of compression and has a low strength and ductility ductility because um, it doesn't warp or absor absorb moist moisture from poured concrete. And the last one is plastic forms. Plastic forms are used for the construction of boundary walls, retaining walls, shear walls, rain water drains, flood or storm, drain walls, irrigation can canals, and in concrete ba banking. It's Formwork is continuously adjustable and has many advantages that can widely be used in the construction field. Um, one of its advantages are it costs effectively, labor-friendly, eco-friendly, low maintenance, and versatile. And that's it. Next. Today we will be discussing about the lightweight abrasive concrete. So what are these lightweight aggregate concrete? So the concrete is called lightweight rocks. So it's not as much greater than 2,200 kilograms. Wow. 
absorbed by our light or high quality lightweight concrete. So, therefore, their density will be preserved because of not much water will be ruin the texture and the green also. Thank you for listening and thank you for listening.